Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I'm the Scary DBA. I work for Redgate Software. Today, I want to talk to you about backups. Now, I've talked to you about backups before, but in that previous discussion, we just used the graphical user interface, the GUI, Management Studio. Today, we're going to get a little bit more specific. We're going to go after backups using T-SQL. Nothing but T-SQL. We're going to work off of scripting and that's it, nothing but T-SQL. The main reason being is, is T-SQL actually brings the primary power of what you can do with backups um, and what you can do with you know, SQL Server in general. Um, really brings that out and makes it so you can automate things, control things down to a very, very granular level and do it in a fashion that becomes repeatable and automatable. And we're going to focus on those scripts so I can show you how to do a backup of a database, how to do differential backup, how to do log backups, and then we're going to automate the entire thing through SQL Agent. And we'll show you some other information about it. Before we get started, let's remember that backups are primarily a business problem. They are primarily a business definition. How often do you need backups? How long must you retain them? There are two terms that you need to define with your business. Recovery time objective, how long will it take me to do a restore? And recovery point objective, meaning exactly to what point in time can I restore this data? Um, those two things must be defined by the business. They are not technology problems. They are business problems, and they are a fundamental part of your ability to recover in a disaster. So you need to make sure that you get those defined with your business before you do anything else with backups. But let's talk tech today. Let's just get started on how to do backups through SQL Server using T-SQL. Now the commands themselves are rock simple. To start with, the first command is very simple, backup. Now from there, you've got to decide what it is you're going to back up. You can back up a database, you can back up your log. We're going to back up a database. And then you have to pick the database that you're going to back up. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose Movie Management as my database that, to back up. So now I've defined the action I'm going to do, backup, what I'm going to back up the database, and which database specifically I'm going to back up, Movie Management. Where do I back it up to? Uh, my choices are disk or tape. Now, I don't know anyone who's using tape anymore. So I'm not going to address it in any way, shape, or form. If you're using a tape system, great. You can back up directly to that tape system. Have a good time. Most of us are backing up to some version of disk. You can either back up locally to your disk or with the newer versions of SQL Server, you can actually back up to a URL, so you can back up to the cloud, say to um, uh, Azure Storage if you want. So we're going to back up to disk, and then we have to define that location. And the disk equals, uh, we're going to use C colon backslash backup, and we'll call it um, moviemm.back. You can call it anything you want, um, but we're just going to go with that. And that is the most simple mechanism for running a database backup right there. So if I execute this, it will execute the query, it will finish up, and then I will have a backup completed. Now the backup completion will show me information, um, how long it took, um, how many pages were processed, because a backup is a page by page copy of the database. Remember, page by page copy, that's the really important keyword and tricky phrase. So you're not doing import export, you're not moving bits and pieces of objects around or bits and pieces of data, you are literally copying pages. So the pages of the, of the database were copied, it took X amount of time, and you can see that here. And that's a simple backup. We can make backups much more complicated. Now if we were to take the same thing, We'll back up database, movie management, to disk. If I were to type in exactly the same, if I were to type in exactly the same thing, if I were to type in exactly the same command and rerun this, I will not get an error. In fact, I will get a backup completed to my file. Now, the immediate question you need to ask is, what happened 
to that file. I did backup movie management to here, and I did backup movie management to here. I can even do another database. So, what happened there? What happened with this database? Well, let's do a quick little check here. We're going to do backup database again. We're going to do movie management again to disk equals. I'm going to go to the same location. But I'm going to give it a new name and we'll run it. Now that backs up the database. Let's go in here to File Explorer. Let's go to my local drive. Let's go to Backup. Let's take a look here. Now we've got our two files, MovieMM.Back and MovieMMTest.Back. And let's just look at the size of these files. One is 299K. The other one is 833K. What the heck is going on? Well, to put it quite simply, this backup command that we've been running over and over again is simply backing up the database on top of the existing database, adding it to that file. So there's a simple command we can run that will allow us to look and see what's inside of a backup file. Now this command actually mirrors a restore command but we're not going to do a restore. We're going to restore header only from disk and we're going to type in, whoops, we're going to type in our file name for the backup that we had. We're going to hit execute and the results we get back, we get back three rows. Now the information here is pretty useful. You'll notice we've got backup name, backup description, both of which we've not supplied. I will show you how to do that shortly. Username, server name, so who did the backup, where was it served, backup from, and then database name. And so now you can see that I have backed up the movie management database twice and the AdventureWorks database once, all to the same file. Okay? So, something to keep in mind, if you're going to do this type of backups, you can but notice the results can be interesting. You can have different databases inside here. Even though the file name is saying something about movies and movie management, I've managed to put AdventureWorks inside there. So really important note, if you're going to stack the files like this, you need to be careful about how you do it and understand exactly what's happening. That's up to you. You figure it out. Make sure that you understand exactly how it works. But let's see if you don't want to stack it, what do you do? Well, we're going to do our same command again. Go to the disk. We're going to go to the exact same thing. You're seeing me type it in real time, which is why I keep messing it up. But we're going to add in a with command. All right? With init. Now what that does is, is it initializes the backup. So running that it completes. And if I just go back up here and rerun the restore header, the results I get back is a single file, a single database inside of that file. Um, that means that what I've done is initialize the file and if I were to run this over and over again, we'll go ahead and just run it a second time, we don't need to type, and then restore the header, you'll note that I'm still, oops, and <laughs> I ran too fast, sorry and then run the restore header, you'll note that I've still only got a single database in that backup file because it's reinitializing it each time. So now let's do a complete backup and include all the necessary information that we need to understand exactly what we're backing up later. So, we'll start off the same way. As you can see, backing up is 
almost repetitive in the details because you've already seen how that works, right? Backup database to disk equals blah, 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 blah with init. All right. We're now going to add in a name. We're going to give the backup a name because you want to know what it is you've backed up. When you go to look at the header, simply knowing that you've got a database is not enough. It's not detailed enough. Where did this backup come from? Why, were you, why was this backup done? Is this part of a standard backup process? You want to give it a name. You want to give it a description. So we're going to give it a name equals, you know, my video backup. And we're also going to give it a description. This is an example backup for the video. So now we've got a more complete setting on our backups. We've got most everything we need. So let's go ahead and run this. The backup completed. Let's go back up here to restore from header. And now when we look at the results, we have more interesting information. The backup name is there. The backup description is there. We also see all the other types, whether or not we have compression, whether or not the expiration date is there, the username, all the other information that I talked about, log sequence numbers, which becomes extremely important, um, when this backup was run, when it was started, when it was finished, all kinds of other information is all available here in the header. This is all great stuff that you're going to need on a regular basis when you're running backups. That's it about backups for the moment. Now remember, this was a full database backup. This is a complete page-by-page -page copy of the database. We're now going to add in one other wrinkle. We're going to start doing log backups to back up the transaction logs because you want to know when transaction logs are backed up. You want to be able to control how transaction logs are backed up. And you, further, you need to be able to recover from a database failure using transaction log backups. Now this database is in full recovery mode, which means that transaction logs are kept, all the transactions are kept in the log until I run a transaction log backup. Yes, those transactions are backed up with the full backup, but it does nothing to the log. It does not clear the log at all when you run that full backup. So you will see your log continue to grow and continue to grow until you do a backup of the log itself. Log backups are ridiculously simple. We're going to do backup, log, and then supply a database name. Okay, you can't simply do something different. It's not hard. It's just the only change you're making is, is that what it is that we're backing up. Instead of backup database, we now backup log. Other than that, same type of operations. Oops keep missing those quotes. And now we're going to give it um, a log now you have a decision to make. You can initialize these and then if you're going to be running them regularly and you do want to run them regularly say every half hour, once an hour, um, every 10 minutes, it really depends on your, your system and your point in time recovery and your recovery time objectives which we talked about earlier and your recovery point objectives which we also talked about earlier. You have to make a decision as to how often you will run these log backups. But now think however often you are running them you either have to have a naming convention so that you take into account dates or you have to have um, a stacked file. Now I'm going to go with, for the logs, a stacked file. Generally what I would recommend is, is on a nightly basis you do an init to restart the log backups and then other than that back them up all to one place during the day. Um, it makes things easier to manage. It requires less of you in terms of programming and, and, and you know all this other stuff. But you know I understand both approaches are valid neither approach is bad just you know you're gonna have to either deal with a stacked file with lots of logs or lots and lots of files one or the other we do a log backup and it completes now log backup is quick because it's only a backup of transactions let's go ahead and add a transaction to our movie management database first off we'll need to switch over to that database and now we will update We'll update the agent. We'll set the uh, agent name equals 
I don't know. I have kids. Where agent ID is equal to 42. So now we have a transaction occurring. We've modified a row in theory. Let's check that. And the results we get back is sure enough we did update the agent name. Great. That puts a new transaction into the transaction log. And so now we can do backup log, movie management. Now I can type it all out again, or I can cheat and simply go up here and run this. And now that backed up the log on top of the one we already have. And we're going to do the same type of thing before. Let's not leave that hanging there. We don't want to see that. We're going to do restore, header only. from disk equals and now we're just going to copy and paste this down to here and now we'll see that we've got two backups in place notice I did not give it a name and I did not give it a description but I can unlog backups something to keep in mind You'll see position one, position two, the two different things. You'll notice the backup type is two now, whereas before it was one. But I've got two log backups. Now the one point I want to point out, the one thing I want to point out to you is that you'll note that the first LSN, the last LSN, the first LSN, last LSN, these are different between these two backups. You'll notice that the last LSN here is the same as the first LSN here. So these are the log sequence numbers. This is the sequencing of the transactions within the log. So you'll note that this backup is backing up transactions that have occurred after the transactions that occurred inside of this backup. So these two backups are actually, these two log backups are actually chained together and they are part of a sequence of logs and you will need that sequence in order to restore to a point in time. If you don't have the sequence, you would get in trouble. Now let's do one more thing. Let's update this again, and we'll call it James Bond. Now we've updated that data. We'll go ahead and back up the log again. And now when we want to, and we do want to do a restore, we could do a restore to a point in time where we get either the original name, Cody Banks, or James Bond, depending on how we run our restore situation. All right, so now what we've got is we've got a, a basic full backup and a basic set of log backups. Now there's a whole bunch more about backups that you can learn. I mean, just tons and tons and tons of things. There's just so much involved with backups. Um, the basic concepts are extremely simple and you know you've already seen how to do them but there is a, a whole level of detail below this that um, I'm just not going to cover in this because I'm going to move on and show you how to do some uh, restore operations and then we're also going to show you how to automate all of this through SQL Agent really quickly. Alright, so next we're going to do restore. Now I'm just not going to erase all this, I'm just going to save it. I'm going to go to a new query and we're going to start restoring. Now, restores can be done either to on top of an existing database or they can be done um, to a new database. You can literally move to a new database. So what I'm going to do just for our example is I'm going to restore to a new database so we can play within one area and not affect what I've already got with my other database. Understand that the restore with a move, which is what we're talking about doing, restoring to a new database, is a slightly more complex restore than just restoring on top of the database. So I'm going to show you the more complex version, then I'm going to show you the easier version. Um, but I want you to understand how to do both uh, because it's just fundamental to getting your restores correct. So you're restoring the correct thing to the correct place the right way. You don't want to accidentally restore on top of a production database. And there's a whole thing, a whole slew of things we could talk about how to avoid that, but we're not going to get into all that today. Just not enough time. Let's talk about the basic restore. 
the first thing we need to know is, is that databases are consist of files. And when you need to restore to a new location, you've got to understand where the files were stored in order to make the move um, work appropriately. So what we're going to do first is we're going to restore file list only from disk. Notice the commands are very, very similar. You get used to it after a while. And we already know that we're going from the backup location, mm underscore, uh, or sorry, movie underscore mm dot back. So we'll be able to see exactly what's in this database. And these are the files that make up this database. It's just two files. We've got movie management, movie management log are the two logical names, and then the physical names are, are as you see there. So to actually run the restore, we're going to give it a command, restore database. Not shocking. We're going to give it a new name. Video for the video that we're recording. So restore database movie management video from disk. Notice these commands are starting to f you're starting to figure them all out because they actually do make sense. And now we need to do a with statement and we're going to do with move. And we're going to move the um, mo logical name, movie management, to, and we're going to give it a new location. And we'll call it mm underscore video dot mdf. We're going to put in a comma and move and we have to do movie management log, our other logical file name, to a location. We'll highlight it, and that should be it. Let's run this. It's executing, it's restoring the database, and it's a page-by-page -page copy again, back into a new database. And if we go over here and we hit refresh, we can see that we now have a movie management underscore video restore completed. That's the with move, that is the move operation. What about just a simple replace, an in-place restore of a database? Well, first, let's do a backup of the new database. So we'll call it mm underscore video dot back. Don't forget init just in case if you're trying to keep it from stacking. Oops, what did we mess up here? Oh, sorry. Don't mind letting you see that. Won't even edit it out of the finished product. There we go. Typos happen, especially when we're typing everything live. Okay, so now that backup is complete. Now let's restore our database. And again, movie management underscore video from disk disk and we're going to do c colon colon backslash mm underscore video dot back so that's our new backup right with replace now what that's going to do is that allows us to skip all of this managing of the location of the files because this backup and this this backup and this database are the same within the information of the backup itself as you've seen from the restore file list only which is a restore of information from the backup that backup knows where everything is located where everything should be so if I'm simply saying replace I will get a restored database put back in place on top of the existing database that I already had. And so now you see the restore completed successfully. As many wrinkles as there are to doing uh, a backup, 
there are, are that many and more wrinkles to doing a restore and I'm not going to get into all the details and all the possible permutations of all the methods for restoring databases uh, just because it will just take way too long for a simple video like this so I want to make sure that we do cover the log restores the recovery to a point in time so we're going to get over that real fast I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this restore down and we'll modify it because the database is a restore is going to restore all the database pages that we backed up and then it's going to look at the transaction logs to um, determine whether or not it does a recovery meaning it rolls forward or rolls back any existing transactions that were taking place during the process of the backup um, we want it to skip that so we're going to say no recovery and we're going to, not going to worry about tail log backups right now so we're going to force a replace on the existing database and not worry about the um, logs that are on that database because we know that we're restoring from a place where we've got particular log backups we want to use normally you could run a tail log backup um, which is just simply one more log backup um, against the database but we're not going to do that right now we're going to do the replace and it's going to do a restore but it's not going to recover and the point that, that allows us to do is then go in and do restores from the logs let's just take a look over here see the refresh and you'll see that this database is in a restoring state it is not accessible you cannot use it yet so we're going to have to do some more processing to restore so we're going to do a restore log and go ahead and give it the name of which database log we're doing from disk equals and let's just go right back over here and get the log backup file that we used it's this one now if you remember when we did the restores there we I mean sorry when we did the backups there we stack them up inside of a single file so we're gonna have to go and make sure that we get the correct file name or the correct file number so we're gonna do a quick look at the restore header only and you notice we've got the three backups that we expected to see the three log backups and you'll notice also that they've got the position one two three of when they were um, you know of how they were placed there and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna restore up to the point where we modified it to um, to get Cody Banks in and I believe that would be our second backup yes it was so we're going to restore with file equals one and no recovery because we still don't want to recover yet so we run this restore and it restores successfully but we're still not happy we need to let me just copy and paste this it makes things a little easier and then with file equals two I'm gonna go ahead and leave no recovery in place and now that runs that and now I can do this I can say restore database mint underscore video with recovery and that's all we're gonna tell it and that will complete the process of applying all the transaction logs that we've restored so far and so now if we run select star from agent where agent ID is equal to 42 and we do this in the correct database because we're going to go to the movie management video database because the one we just restored from our log backups and we take a look at our results and we do see Cody Banks we don't see James Bond so you do see the fact that we have modified the stuff that we've captured the transactions that we've done that roll forward um, of all the transactions by doing a point in time recovery to a point in time that is after the data changes now you can use another thing called stop at and stop at will allow you to put in a specific time date and time 
to stop at and you would want to do that stop at statement for each of the log restores that you're doing not just one um, but that makes it so you can recover to a specific point in time within the log not simply applying the logs as we've done here so those are other additional things that you can do with those restores all of that said how are we going to automate this backup process well SQL Server has a scheduling mechanism built right into it and so we can go in here and we can create jobs and you see I've already got some jobs in place we're gonna create a new one new job we'll call it backup movie management steps we're gonna add a new step we're gonna make sure that we have choices but we're gonna make sure that it's a T SQL step and we'll just call it backup database doesn't matter which database you run it from because a backup process kind of doesn't matter but generally for management system uh, for system management stuff I run it from the master database you can also modify it to run as different logins if necessary but basically we're just going to give it a tsql command because that's all we have to do now we can open existing commands we can paste we can um, validate things but what we're going to do is just type in backup database movie management to disk equals C colon backslash backup backslash auto mm dot back. You could parse that statement. Oops, let's put it in the terminator. We can parse that statement and it will successfully parse. And so now we've got a mechanism for running backups. But what we don't yet have is a schedule. So we'll click over here and we'll get schedules. We'll click new. And now we get to really go to town and have fun. So let's just say we want to run a daily backup, right? So it's a recurring backup. You can also have it whenever the CPU is um, idle, when this agent starts, or have it be a one-time thing that you schedule. We're going to run it daily, um, every one day, every two days, however you want to set it up. When would you like it to occur? Let's say 3 a.m. is our downtime, minimal system um, use at that point, and so we would be able to control how much impact this has. Or we can have it occur every one hour. So if you're setting up, say, a log backup, you could have it occur every 10 minutes, for example. But we're just going to have a, a full backup occur once. And then you can have a start date and an end date if you want to stop it at some point. Um, preferably for backups we never want to stop them we always want to make sure we've got backups in place we'll hit OK and now we've basically got our backup we've got the um, general information what the name of it is we've got a step which is the database we've got a schedule and it will run now we can set up alerts we can set up notifications we can set up specific targets to go to multiple servers if necessary if we've got that configured but basically we'll click OK and now at 3 a.m every day this new um, job will run and back up that database there are probably a whole lot more things that we can talk about as far as backup as far as um, back you know um, programmatically backing up multiple databases um, programmatically setting up the restore of the log so that it steps through each of the files needed to do recovery to a point in time um, there's a whole slew of additional things you're going to have to learn and pick up, but this quick half hour, um, and it has been a full half hour, on how to set up uh, transaction log, uh, sorry, uh, database full backups through T-SQL, log backups through T-SQL, database restores through T-SQL, and log restores through T-SQL, and then automating your backup processes through the SQL agent. All of this gives you a good introduction and a good foundation so you can begin to satisfy the business needs that backups define. And never forget, they are a business need. Thank you very much. My name is Grant Fritchie. I'm the Scary DBA. I work for Redgate Software.